Excuse me, do you happen to have the time? Because the President of the United States clearly doesn't have the time. He can't be bothered, and anyway, he doesn't know what time zone he's in. I'm pissed, I'm sad, I'm tired of it all, and I want answers about what happened in Afghanistan. Mr. President, on Afghanistan? I'm not going to answer Afghanistan now. Can you get to the cylinder? Okay. Risk is like an airport, sir. Afghanistan. Okay. Can can you please answer a question on Afghanistan? He's not going to answer questions about that because Joe Biden ain't got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Am I doing this again? For the, for the senior staff. staff. Yes. All right. A number of cabinet anyone? members have already. <laughs> My memory is not as good as Justice Roberts. Chief <laughs> Justice Roberts does. <laughs> does anyone... oh. Which brings us to today's question. What does Joe Biden have time for? If you have some time, please let me know in the comments and then share this video to show the world how much time our president apparently doesn't have. Also, stick around until the end of the video because I have something positive to share with you. I've taken the time to find a happy moment. And one more thing, check out the other video this week that has my reaction to Biden's sad sack victory lap speech on, as he says, ending the war in Afghanistan. Now back to it. As we've seen over the past few weeks, ah oh hell, the entirety of this presidency, Biden can't be bothered with such things as ensuring all Americans are able to evacuate Afghanistan. Is the U.S. guaranteeing that you will be able to get out? I don't think we can guarantee, but what we can do is work toward, and this is what the president directed the Secretary of State to continue diplomatic efforts with international partners to secure means for third country nationals, Afghans with visas who may be eligible for our programs, of course, any American citizen who remains in country to leave the country even after the U.S. military presence ends. Don't you dare ever think that the president will do the will of the people. Just 38 percent of Americans approve of Biden's handling of Afghanistan. Eighty four percent say U.S. troops should stay in Afghanistan until all Americans are evacuated. That's not going to happen. And, and here's the interesting thing about that poll question. The second one you mentioned, 84 percent. It's consistent. It's one of the only things I have seen for years, a question where Democrats, Republicans, and independents, all over 80 percent say exactly the same thing, that we should stay until all Americans are evacuated. As you point out, not going to happen. You know why it's not going to happen? Ain't nobody got time for that. As Americans, we're all on the same page with this. In a book that is on a shelf in a library that is nowhere in the zip code that Joe Biden is living. But it's time we talk straight about Joe's level of respect for people who have died. His mom uh, lived in, uh, in Long Island for 10 years or so. Uh, God rest her soul. And uh, um, although she's, wait, your mom's still, your mom's still alive as your dad passed. God bless her soul. <laughs> I gotta get this straight. That level of respect from 11 years ago has only diminished based on how he treated our Gold Star families and our deceased military members who were killed at the Kabul airport while trying to get people out of Afghanistan. When Biden went to Dover Air Force Base as part of the dignified transfer, he didn't have the time to pay attention. Why he had any media there in the first place is unknown, but it's probably because the media defends his actions. The Washington Post wants you to know that Biden watches. The same Washington Post then tells Americans, or just their readers, their people, the Democrats, to just calm down because the Biden presidency won't end over this. So take a chill pill, dude. Democrats, just carry on with the leftist agenda. The opinion writer, Matt Bay, wrote, but is this really going to derail President Biden's entire agenda? Probably not. And it's all because his name is not Donald Trump. If Donald Trump did anything remotely like looking at his watch while he should be there giving condolences to service members' families who sacrificed their lives for him to be the leader of this country, 
media brains would have broken and it would be nonstop claptrap. But Joe Biden is not Donald Trump. And it was that watch, that watch, that actually made it so Joe Biden became president. Clearly, the watch is why he needed to be elected. It is the perfect foil to Trump, according to GQ. That sums it up. Matt Bay is probably right. For Biden, there is no consequence. No worry. No care in the world for the very real cost of human loss. Human loss that will only increase because Biden didn't have time to get the equipment out of Afghanistan before he up and tried to run away. President Biden trips, not once, not twice, but three times as he tries to climb the stairs to Air Force One today. The war chest left behind for the Taliban to kill hundreds and thousands of innocent men, women, and children is valued at just around $85 billion, with plenty of guns, especially those dangerous assault rifles, trucks, helicopters, and planes. Biden could have allowed the military to get all of this out, but ain't nobody got time for that. That's why you have Taliban openly mocking the West by flying our Black Hawk helicopters while dead bodies are hanging from them. Now, I'm not going to show you the gruesome video, but you can find it for yourself. I'll show this one instead to reassure you that the Taliban is civil, humanitarian, and not at all holding hostage any people. Hassan Miguyanke, Rais Jumhur Farori, wa Mardumatan Hogozor. That's totally normal. The Taliban is just holding the guns immediately behind that man on TV. And that man is reassuring the Afghan people to not be afraid because the Taliban is civil and humanitarian. That's reassuring. The same person reporting from BBC with that video also reported that the head of security for Al Qaeda is now in Nangarhar in Afghanistan. And he got a hero's welcome. Also reassuring. Just remember there was no time and the Taliban wanted to take Kabul, the capital, as soon as possible. Except that's not what happened. According to the Washington Post, a Taliban official offered the United States to control Kabul. But Biden just wanted to get everyone out and knew only the airport was needed. So the U.S. got the airport until August 31st and the Taliban controlled Kabul. In other words, for Biden to direct orders to keep a hold on the capital, it just... Ain't nobody got time for that. We are going to do one more because I'm running out of time, but not as quickly as Joe Biden is. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I look forward to working with you now and for many years forward. Thank you. Well, thank you. And you give me credit, much of which should go to Barack Obama. Obama, I wasn't sleeping. We are right now at a time between the final evacuation of American presence in Afghanistan and the 20th anniversary of September 11th. Only time will tell how the next week will unfold. As promised at the beginning, I'm going to end on this note because we need something positive. It should make you want to share this video. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved the wretch like me. Until next time, stay healthy, America.